delighted to be here in Mississippi, delighted to be um, crossing swords again with uh, Christopher Hitchens and addressing the topic of what is so great about God. Now, here in the Bible Belt, you might feel that this is the uh, Christian capital, you might say, of the world, uh, but actually it is not so. Uh, it's, um, if you want a capital for Christianity in the world, you're probably better to look at Seoul, South Korea, or you're probably better to look at uh, a village in Nigeria, uh, or a favela in Brazil. The point I want to make here, and it's actually a very encouraging point for those of us who are religious believers, uh, is that religion in general, but specifically Christianity, is spreading rapidly throughout the world. In fact, many people think Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, but it's not true. Islam is the second fastest growing. Uh, the fastest growing is Christianity. Uh, Islam spreads mainly through reproduction, Muslims having big families. But Christianity spreads through reproduction and conversion. Now, this is a big surprise because just a couple of decades ago, when I was in college, we learned that the world is becoming inevitably more secular. There's a kind of inexorable tide away from belief in God and toward what the philosopher Nietzsche called the death of God, a completely secular society. And the idea was that as countries become more modern, uh, more industrial, more scientific, more affluent, they will automatically become less religious. This was called the secularization thesis, or the secularization expectation. And the interesting thing is it has turned out not to be true. In fact, the only example of secularization that we can point to in a clear way is Europe. It's true, as Europe became more affluent, it did become more secular. But America hasn't gone the way of Europe. And in fact, if you look at the newly modernizing countries of India and China, uh, you find that far from becoming less religious, they're becoming more religious. And in fact, Christianity is spreading very rapidly in countries where it previously had no footing at all. You have African countries that were 1% or 2% Christian 100 years ago, and now they are 50% Christian. So why am I telling you all this? Because it seems to me that one reason we are seeing this new atheism, a kind of attack against God, an attack against Christianity, is not because Christianity is losing, but because it is winning. 25 years ago, the atheists thought, we can sit back on our rocking chairs and just wait the world is going to move in our direction, but now they've realized that's not happening. We've got a counterattack. And so I think the belligerency of these books, the God delusion, God is not great, are a reflection of the fact uh, that atheism has got to, you might say, go evangelical. And what I mean by that is we now have a new phenomenon in our time. You could call it missionary atheism. The atheist actually wants to get out there and make converts to his or her cause. Now, what's my complaint about, the, about all this? First of all, I want to say that in this debate, my idea is to defend Christianity, but without appealing to any Christian premises. In other words, I'm not going to be citing the Bible. I'm not going to appeal to Revelation. You might almost say I'm going to debate with one hand tied behind my back. But why? Because ultimately, I want to engage the secular critique on its own ground, which is on the ground of reason. So our debate will be conducted by discussing history and philosophy and science and politics. But at no point am I going to appeal to any kind of Christian revelation. I'm going to appeal, as Christopher Hitchens claims to, uh, on the ground of reason alone. And one of the complaints I want to make is that the atheist today is ignoring, is actually neglecting the huge influence of God, but specifically the Christian God, in shaping the values of our society, even the values that the atheists care about. Let's set aside for a moment Christian values. Let's just look at atheist values. Values like the idea of the individual or the right to dissent 
uh, or uh, the idea of toleration or the equal dignity of women or the idea of compassion as an important social value, the, the, the dignity of life and so on, the importance of science, which a lot of atheists will champion as their cause. The point I want to make is that these values have assumed the importance that they have in the West and in fact in some cases in the world because of Christianity. Uh, take, for example, the ideas behind the Declaration of Independence. All men are created equal, and out of that comes this entire catalog of rights. And yet Jefferson, who was not a particularly devout Christian, Jefferson never read, generally tended to read his Bible with a friendly pair of scissors, cutting out passages that he didn't like so much and so on, didn't like the miracles. But on the other hand, when Jefferson sat down to identify the source of our rights, where do these rights, they're supposed to be self-evident, some people might say they're not evident at all. Where do these rights come from? Jefferson could think of only one source, namely our creator. Ultimately, it is because we are created equal, you may say, in the eyes of God, that's why it follows that no man has the right to rule another man without his consent. That is not only the basis for opposing slavery, the anti-slavery movement, but you might say it's also the basis of democracy. Modern democracy is based on the idea of what? No man or no person has the right to rule another without consent. Not only have our political ideas not only do they derive from Christianity, from Jerusalem, you might say, Christianity and in some cases Judaism before that, but even science has its roots in Christianity. Now, some people will dispute this, but if you think about it, ask yourself this question. We've had all these cultures in the world, and yet modern science, the scientific method, what Whitehead called the invention of invention, that occurred only in one civilization, namely Western civilization. In fact, it occurred only in the civilization historically called Christendom. Why is that? Why did science develop here? Aren't there smart people in other cultures who also wanted to figure out stuff? The truth of it is, science developed in Western civilization because it is based on a Christian assumption. And what is that Christian assumption? It's the assumption that nature, or the universe, is intelligible. In other words, that nature follows predictable laws. Now you might say, well, that's kind of obvious, that's what science is based on. But if you think about it, it's not obvious at all. Why should nature be lawful? In Christianity, the idea is that we have an omniscient, or all-knowing God. So yes, he made a rational universe. We have God who is a lawgiver. He gave us the Ten Commandments, the moral law. So it's not surprising he gave us the laws of nature. But my point is, in some senses, the intelligibility of the universe is a kind of mystery. Let me give you an example of what I'm getting at here. It is a key, one of the central laws of science that light travels at the speed of 186,000 miles a second in a vacuum. That's one of the central laws of science. And yet, in some level, if you think about it, you say, well, how do we know that? We can measure the speed of light. You can measure it one time or ten times or a million times. Who cares? How do you know that on, in a galaxy ten light years away, light travels over there at that speed? Has anybody measured it over there? No. We're simply guessing that because light is measured traveling at a certain speed over here, it must travel at the same speed over there. And not only that... But we assume that light that travels uh, 10,000 years ago or even 5 billion years ago, light also traveled at the same speed, although there's absolutely no way to verify that. So how do we know that? We're assuming a lawful cosmos. Now again, when you go to other cultures, you see right away how this assumption is immediately called into question. The great Muslim thinker Al-Ghazali says, human beings can follow laws, if you 